My name is Xin Luna Dong, and uh, I'm a principal scientist at Meta. And uh, in particular, I'm in the Meta Reality Lab. So that is where we develop all of the AR VR techniques. So the relationship uh, I have with semantics is that I have been working on knowledge graphs uh, for the past decade. And before that, I have been working on data integration for another decade. And uh, in this 20 year journey, I have been building three particular knowledge graphs, uh, starting from the personal knowledge graph, which is my PhD thesis. Uh, it's called CEMEX uh, for personal information management to Google generic knowledge graph. And this is at the time when I worked at Google from the year of um, 2013 to uh, 16. And then later on the Amazon product knowledge graph. And this was at the time uh, when I worked for Amazon. And this is the product knowledge graph, which is uh, text reach. We use the knowledge graph to support three different kinds of applications, uh, including uh, Google Web Search and QA. And uh, later on, for uh, Amazon kind of e-business, uh, uh, like detail page, search, recommendation. And um, recently, we have been using public and personal knowledge graph to support smart assistants. Uh, this is a great question. So uh, my interest as well as my uh, sort of uh, vision have been changing a lot for collecting knowledge and for using the knowledge. So at the very beginning, uh, I have been much more about working on data integration. And so uh, the knowledge is collected all from structured or semi-structured data. And it is much more of a finding all of the structured data sources, uh, either from a relational database or from a, um, like a semi-structured websites and getting the knowledge from those uh, structured sources and integrate them together to address all of the heterogeneity. For example, they represent the same real world entity like a person in different ways, referring to, to, the, uh, referring to them possibly in different names. And uh, they represent different attributes, relationships in different ways. And there are some incorrect data from time to time. And so we have all of this heterogeneity at the entity level, at the attribute level, at the value level and how to address that using the data integration techniques. So that is about uh, 10 years of my work. And uh, later on, I have also like uh, been doing that work from time to time. But uh, after the first 10 years, uh, I sort of started working at um, uh, Google and have been putting a lot of uh, efforts into how to extract knowledge from the text sources. Now it is not structured or semi-structured data, but more of uh, unstructured data. And later on, it even comes to media data in multimodal extraction. And so we do this uh, knowledge extraction uh, in addition to knowledge integration to get the data from uh, like uh, text uh, web sources, from uh, product profiles, uh, et cetera. And in the past three to five years, I have also been doing like an, uh, knowledge mining where we try to mine a deep uh, taxonomy from the text sources. So again, this uh, um, uh, knowledge source has evolved from structure, semi-structured data to text data. So this is one part. And then another difference is now uh, 
I'm thinking of more of uh, what is the best representation of the knowledge. It used to be symbolic form. We have this uh, triple form, subject, predicate, and object. And then now uh, with the glory of the large language models, and it's much more of can we actually use uh, the neural form of knowledge to improve the applications. And this is not new in the sense that even five years ago or maybe like uh, 10 years ago, we are already doing, for example, this uh, knowledge embedding. But there, the knowledge embedding is much more in terms of what is the relationships of the edges and the nodes and the nodes and edges are basically represented by, just by an ID. Uh, but now with language model, we really want to understand what are the attribute values, what are the sort of the meanings of the text the tokens for the entity descriptions, etc. And so we need new technology or new way to embed the knowledge in the neural form using the embeddings. And how do the symbolic form and uh, neural embeddings coexist? So, and how to use both forms of knowledge to best support search, recommendation, etc. So that is my current uh, focus. Yeah, this is a great question. So uh, what inspired me to dive into this uh, semantics or knowledge graph topics? I think this dates back even to the time when I was a very little child. So um, I grew up in China and uh, at the time when I grew up, it is not a rich country at all. And uh, even for like um, books, we do not, I do not have that many books uh, when I was a little child. And getting information for something is absolutely different, uh, difficult. I remember, for example, we read the newspapers and then we sort of uh, cut off those articles for topics and then we sort of stitch it to some like, um, uh, like uh, 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 sort of a uh, uh, booklet so later on, when I need to know information about a topic, I will sort of find it out from those um, cut paste news articles. And uh, similarly, I remember like my mom, uh, she cut a lot of like a calendar uh, pieces uh, for like um, the recipe for cooking. And so getting information is really hard uh, when I was young. And uh, in a sense, I really want to uh, someday have a lot of information for everything. So later on, when I got to this field of data integration and uh, knowledge graph, this is kind of uh, realizing my uh, dream as a little girl. But that's not all of it. And then later on, we have the web and we are getting more and more information, but then we get to the other side. And so it is still very hard to find the information. And also uh, it is uh, not uh, so easy to find a uh, correct information because there are imprecise information on the web as well. So then the question becomes how to collect the correct information. Again, this is uh, basically what the knowledge graph uh, field is trying to do and how to best serve the knowledge. So talking about my vision for future, that is to serve the right information at the right time. And so this, I would say, have three levels of meanings. First, when a user asks a question, we should be able to serve the best knowledge the best information to answer that question. And have we achieved this? Not really. For web search, as an example, we have a lot of like blue links. The users still need to sort of synthesize from those returned web pages. And if we use large language models, on the other hand, um, oftentimes there are hallucinations. And so we cannot fully trust the information there. 
And so how to answer questions with all correct factual information that is not a solved problem. This is the first level. The second level is how to help users realize the unknowns. Sometimes they do not, they have blind spots and they do not know what they do not know. And so they won't ask questions about this, but this can still be useful information for the users. And this can be done, for example, through recommendations and how to best uh, recommend information or other related stuff that, for example, movie information, product information to enrich the user's life, that's the second level. And the third level is regarding why I'm talking about provide the right information at the right time. And this is regarding what is the best time to serve the information, especially if it is recommended information. So um, it means uh, we do answer users' questions uh, reactively. We also want to proactively push some information that is useful but not overwhelming or distracting. And so that is what I mean by at the right time, and that needs a lot of study as well. So that comes back to the question regarding what is the vision. The vision is to serve the right information at the right time, and it still need a lot of research in terms of how to provide search and recommendation services reactively and proactively. Uh, this is a great question and the answer is almost certain at this point. So the new technology to uh, revolutionize uh, knowledge graphs is large language models at this point. And large language models can help both in terms of uh, collecting knowledge and more to serve the knowledge. And uh, I know there have been a lot of uh, study regarding, hey, uh, or a lot of debates regarding, hey, with the large language models, do we still have uh, or need the knowledge graphs? These two are actually complement each other instead of like competing with each other. And so for large language models to be really useful, as I just mentioned, uh, we need to get rid of all of the hallucinations. and improve the factuality of the large language models is one big topic to make large language models useful. And to do this, uh, we will need the knowledge graphs uh, to provide the factual, correct factual information uh, in the uh, conversations. So that is one big challenge uh, to improve large language model and to help the usage of uh, knowledge graphs. A second uh, sort of a challenge for large language models is uh, multimodal understanding. And this is uh, important for knowledge graphs as well because we can now sort of uh, provide multimodal uh, knowledge and that can support a whole lot of new technologies for large language models. And the third thing is personalized large language models. That's the third kind of challenge uh, to improve large language models. When we are in the conversations, when we answer the questions from the users, we want to personalize the answer such that it is best useful for the user and how to enable that. This is where the personal knowledge graph can kick in and help. So what is the uh, information that is particularly relevant and critical for the personal user? And what are the past experiences that can help for future recommendation and how to do all of this uh, while still preserving the privacy of the users? and that these are important things we need to study. And so I hope this answered this question. With the new technology of large language models, we can see new revolutions for knowledge graphs.